Okay everybody, so your learning objective today is I can measure my time and make a timetable. So, what we're going to be doing is, first of all, we're going to be going all around our house to find all of the different ways that we can measure time um, and to see if we can count some time. Then what we're going to do is think about the time that we learned last week, thinking about seconds and minutes and hours and then we're going to try to write a timetable as best we can to talk about what takes us seconds, what takes us minutes and what takes us hours. Okay, let's get going. I have found a clock that is um, measuring time. As you can see, the red um, hand is counting each second. Ready? One potato, one potato, one potato, one potato. You see, the long hand is counting the minutes. Okay, so once this goes round, six, for 60 seconds, a minute has passed as we've learned, so this will move a little bit. And then the little hand is looking at the hours. Okay, so that is measuring time, that's one way of measuring On my phone, I've seen that I can use a stopwatch, which is measuring time. Can you see how it's, um, counting each second it's going up bit by bit um, so you can count along with your one potato two potato so stopwatches are another way of measuring time here we have another way of measuring time I've got a sand timer so if you look I turn it over and see how all of the sand at the top starts going into the bottom this is a way of measuring time. So the time on this is 30 seconds. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, so this sand will run for 30 seconds. Then when this top bit is empty and all of the sand's down there, then we know that 30 seconds has passed. That is another way of measuring time. Then of course, I've got here a countdown. Um, I put in 30 seconds. I found this on the computer. You might find it on your phone and um, it's counting down and that's another way of measuring time. You can see as that arrow moves around, it's counting down from that circle shape and it is has also got a second countdown timer there that you can see moving as well. So these are all different ways that we can measure time. Okay guys, so now that we've looked and tried all different measures of time, now what you're going to start to do is put together a timetable. But I'm going to show you how to measure the time and how to put this together, okay? So it would be great if you could do it for a morning or your afternoon or just a little bit of time. But even better would be if you could work with your adults and put a timetable together for the whole day. So just one of your days, maybe the day that you're doing this work, you could um, do it throughout the day and put together a whole timetable just to show all of the different measures of time that you have learned. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna show you an example. Okay, let's get there. Okay guys, so as you can see, like, I've drawn out a timetable here. Um, so it's got activity, time it takes, and time of day. So you're going to um, think about first of all, what your activity is. So the first activity, so you can put a little number one there if you want. So the first activity that I do in a day is I go for a walk in the morning when I wake up. Then what I need to do is measure the time to see the time that it takes and then right here, the time of day. So I already know that because I go in the morning time, okay? So thinking about times of days, which we know. So let's go and time how long it takes, ready? Okay guys, so as you saw from the picture, the walk was 25 minutes and 58 seconds. I measured the time using a timer on my phone. Um, and I did speed up the walk for you guys so that this video wasn't too long. So in this column on my timetable, I'm going to write time it takes. I'm going to write 25. I'm gonna put an M for minutes and 58 and then an S for seconds. And at the side of my timetable, I'll make a key is what we call it to show. 
and I'm going to put M is minutes and S is seconds so that anybody looking at my timetable knows what this means, okay? So for my first task there, I've got a walk is my activity, the time it takes is 25 minutes and 58 seconds, and the time of day that I completed this activity was the morning, and I've got a key at the side that tells me whether it's second and minutes. What's our other measure of time, guys? Can you have a think? This would especially come in if you time yourself when you go to sleep. It is what we learned yesterday. It's going to have a h which is the sound and that is going to be for hour okay so we have seconds we have minutes can you remember how many seconds are in a minute quick quick who can do it who can do it there are 60 seconds in a minute we've got minutes then we've got hour can you remember how many minutes are in an hour who's got it there are 60 minutes in an hour whoosh Okay, so guys, this is what I would like you to fill out, hopefully for about a day. Um, if you forget an activity that you've done, that's okay. If you forget something you've done, that's all right. Um, but hopefully by the end of it, you the first part of your task earlier was to measure time, find different ways to measure time. You might want to make a log of that in your book as well. You could actually show how you measured the time. So here I might put in brackets, uh, stopwatch. But it might be um, that you measure your time in different ways. You do it how you want to do it. It's your timetable. Um, you use colour pencils. If you've got colour pencils, make it look beautiful. Some people like to box it off like this. And then might colour this in pink for this one or this one blue. You know, make it beautiful. But yeah, your um, learning objective is to measure time and to make a timetable. So that is your job for today. Bringing all your learning on time so far together. Okay, give it a go, guys. Enjoy.